How are we doing everybody? Welcome to another episode of Getting Jiggly With It. I'm Will. And today we're going to do a special little top 25 video. If you saw the title or the th thumbnail or anything, you know what that is. Uh, this is what I'm going to call the people's choice. Now this isn't people's choice from my poll. Pump Meeple actually has the ability to go back and check what everybody voted on on the previous year. So this is the people's choice for 2022, which was last year. Plan to get this video out a little bit earlier life happens right uh so some of these i do need to add i guess a little caveat is some games showed up more than once in the top 25 um, and some of course had multiple versions or revisions that might have made it into the top i think it did like the top 500 when i exported the spreadsheet so i actually went in took them combined them recalculated the data ba based off of that um, i'll give you those new numbers uh, there is actually a 26th game which is kind of a i don't want to say honorable mention but when you add in the other versions of that game, it threw it way down on the list. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and mention that because it did make the top 25 otherwise, if I hadn't have done that uh, math with the different editions. In some cases, it made sense. Uh, for example, a collector's edition and a regular edition got rated separately. Uh, in some cases, it was just a reprint. Uh, so both of them being real close to each other makes sense, but it does make sense to count them separately. It's one of the things I don't like about BGG is that they actually show both games in their top list, even if it's just another version or re-implementation. Uh, so I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to kind of combine them. Uh, but we are also going to then, of course, look at the BGG to see how they rated overall there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start this list at the bottom. So of course, this is that honorable mention game. So that is uh, Viticulture. Viticulture actually ended up as 100 when I refactored. Uh, the way that worked out is it came out to about a 63 percentile uh, overall, and it was ranked a total of 10,102 times. Uh, so with that said, we're gonna go ahead and then pull up our BGG. So here we go, we got uh, Viticulture pulled up here. So uh, Viticulture re-implements Viticulture. So I'll go ahead and pull that up as well so we can kind of see where the original Viticulture lands. But the overall rank for Viticulture is 32. Uh, and like I said, I think that goes in par with um, the Pub Meeple. Pub Meeple actually had it at, like I said, it was in the top 25. I was stupid and forgot to write down the number. Uh, but when you calculate both the 2013 edition and the 2015 edition, which is the essential edition, which people say highly improves the game, uh, it does drop it down quite a bit. Um, you guys let me know if I shouldn't rate them that way next year. Just let me know down in the comments. Uh, and maybe I won't do that. Now for the original Viticulture, uh, if we go ahead and open this up in a new tab here, we're looking at it's 246 overall. So again, you do that average, you get the 246 and the 32. That 100 almost matches up with how uh, BGG has um, this um, ranked. All right, so then now we're gonna go ahead and start our actual top 25. Number 25 is the Castles of Burgundy. So again, this had multiple versions at a 2011 version, 2019 version. And then of course there is the new Awakened Realms version that's gonna be coming out soon with all the deluxified components. So we'll have to see how that ends up on the ranking. We did back the Kickstarter. So of course we'll be getting that. So of course, if we rank it, that's what we're going to call it. But as we do with our top 25 rankings, you can go back and look at those videos. We always combine similar games anyways. So like for Oddity with Villainous, it was all of the Villainous games, right? So with that, we'll go ahead and go over to uh, BGGs. So here we go. This is uh, Castles of Burgundy. This is the original 2011 edition. So the overall rank when it was 11. Uh, 16 in strategy. So that is a little bit of a departure. Now, again, this is the combined ranking, uh, original Castles of Burgundy. I don't, I probably should have wrote what the original ranking was, uh, but this is the combined ranking. Now the original uh, or the re-implemented Castles of Burgundy actually does not have a ranking at all. So this must be one of the times when BGG has actually combined the two or for some other reason, it just doesn't have a ranking. I'm, I'm not sure why, uh, but that is Castles of Burgundy, which made number 25. All right, so moving on to number 24 is Gaia Project, which was released in 2017. Uh, it had a 71 percentile with 3776. Uh, I forgot to mention Castle of Burgundy. It was at 71.289 percentile. Uh, this is 71.841 percentile. So you can see the, the amount differences is very small between these. 
However, this does have almost a thousand more uh, votes for it. All right, so here we go. We have Gaia Project up. Uh, this is overall ranked 11. So that is a big difference in consideration that there is no normalization here. There was only one version of Gaia Project uh, and it is ranked a lot higher on BGG. So that's one thing a lot of people say, for example, like, your big games on BGG that are rated very highly, it's because they're lifestyle games, they have lots of, of voting. Um, but when you go to the actual people, it might be a little bit differently, right? Because that's not somebody's lifestyle game, they play a lot of different games. So Gaia Project re-implements Terra Mystica, so I guess just for uh, comparison's sakes, we'll see where that landed. So Terra Mystica was 25 overall. So that's something I didn't do. I didn't combine Terra Mystica and Gaia Project because technically they're, they're different games. Um, I think there's enough differences in the two games from what I understand. We've never played it uh, to where you really wouldn't be able to compare those two uh, equally. All right. So moving on to number 23 is Marvel Champions, the card game uh, that came in with a 71.848. So it only took out uh, Gaia Project by 0 .007. Uh, and that had a total of uh, 4,779 uh, votes. And where that lands on BGG. All right, so here we go. Marvel Champions, the card game. So it's 38 overall. So it is a lot more popular with the people than it is uh, on BGG. Now again, BGG ratings are biased. They do have like a little formula that adjusts it a little bit. Whereas Pub Meeple is, this is just what people said they had as their number one, number two, number five game. And it ranks them accordingly with their little formula. Uh, of course, we play Marvel Champions. We like Marvel Champions. It did make it into my top 25. It doesn't make it into Oddity's top 25. Uh, so we'll have to see uh, how that stands and holds the test of time when you know, we like playing games that we enjoy playing together. So moving on to number 22. Number 22 is the War of the Rings 2nd Edition. Now this was one where there weren't both versions in the top 500. So this is an unadjusted amount, if I remember correctly. Uh, this one had 71.9, uh, what is it? 71.93, uh, but only 2,000. 426 votes so again this is one thing that bgg they use that as a weight as well because the more people or the more votes means that it is more likely to be accurate um bgg doesn't reveal their formula so we really don't know how it actually works and so bgg has this as an overall of nine so it is way more popular on bgg compared to uh on pub meeple and again that's probably most likely due to the ratings they have 18,000 ratings but how many of those are in their top 10, right? How many people have that as one of their top games? And there's a lot of 10, so 5.7 uh, in the top 10 and even another 4.6 in the uh, number nine. All right, so moving on to number 21. Number 21 is Everdell 2018. Uh, this is one that had to be um, adjusted because there's the regular Everdell, the, there's the Everdell Deluxe Edition, and then of course there's the uh, behind us Everdell, or behind me, uh, not that he's not here, uh, Everdell Complete Collection. So because of those three differences, I had to do the average on that. Uh, Everdell ended up with a 72.144, uh, and the combined of all of those was over 10,900 uh, votes. All right, we head over here to BGG. So BGG has this as a 31 overall. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the other editions of this one pulled up. I forgot to do that um, to see where they land. But I do know that this, the base Everdell, is the highest rated of the, the grouping. Uh, so that is a, a dramatic difference between what the people like and what BGG has it rated as. All right, so we're going to move on to number 20. Number 20 is Wingspan. There's only been one edition, 20, the 2019 edition. Um, there was, uh, that's a 72.266 with 14,332 uh votes on that one uh that's one game we haven't been able to play yet from stonemaier games we do get the opportunity to review a lot of stonemaier games so that's hopefully one we'll get to play soon i uh, hear a lot of good things i think it's one of those evergreen games as they say it's it's going to be around forever all right so here we go we go over to bgg so it is ranked 26 overall so this wouldn't have made the top 25 if you were going by bgg stats however by the people the people say that yes this is worthy of being in the top 25 at number 21 versus 26 here uh but again a well-loved game well-received game i know like the dice tower they do their people's choice where people vote and it ends up high in their uh ratings as well 
All right, so number, what do we have to up to? Number 19. Number 19 is Dwellings of Everdale. Uh, it had a uh, 72.667, uh, but it only had 1,947 votes. So again, this is where the number of votes are not going to bias numbers like they do in BGG. Um, the other thing is, of course, we now have uh, Dwellings of Everdale is kind of hard to uh, get for most people. And with Andromeda's Edge running a Kickstarter now, a lot of people are jumping in there because they don't want to miss out on it again. So I almost guarantee next year we'll probably see, well, probably not next year, the year after, we'll probably see Andromeda's Edge probably be in the top 25 as well. Whether or not that pushes dwelling, Dwellings of Everdale out, that's to be determined. All right, so here we go on BGG. It's an overall of 148. So that shows you the difference of what can happen when you add in that uh, buffer uh, that uh, BGG adds to every game. It's basically they throw in a bunch of fives just to kind of buffer a game out uh, to then be able to calculate their score. But again, most people that play it uh, like it. Uh, 8.2 is the overall ranking, uh, 4.9 ranking. So about half is half the people that have ever ranked it uh, have actually used Pub Meeple as well. Uh, most of them are sixes, nines. I mean, you got 1,000 in the eights. Not too bad. All right, so moving on, the next one is number, what are we up to? 18, which is Oathsworn, uh, big long thing, Into the Deep Wood with 72.81 percentile, but only 261 votes. Again, a very new game. Uh, it went into a second printing. We didn't, we unfortunately, the retailer we bought it from, we didn't get to get our copy of Oath Swarm, which really disappointing because I really wanted to play it. So luckily we were able to get in on the second printing, which is, uh, wasn't too much more than the original printing. So we're really happy about that. Uh, I imagine once more people get copies of that, this one is going to climb up the ranks. A lot of people are talking really good things about Oath Swarm, as well as and Trespass Odyssey, uh, which of course just recently delivered same thing, we're having issues. Retailer didn't get their copies. Uh, we will probably not get that one because that price went up quite a bit. But I digress on that. But I really do feel like, yeah, Oath Sworn is probably going to move up. Uh, but let's see where it is currently on BGG. Okay, here we go. We are on BGG 9.1, but it is 301 overall. So again, that's that difference of not having the um, number of votes for it. So once it gets a couple thousand votes in, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, like some of the other games, uh, you can definitely see this one's going to greatly probably increase in the ranks. I don't see any reason why this probably can't make it close to the top 100, if not break the top 100 next year. Uh, well, next year or the year after, once everybody get, gets their copies from the second printing, uh, but that is Oathsworn. Okay, number 17 is Sleeping Gods. So Sleeping Gods came out in 2021. Now, of course, there is a uh, sequel uh, that just finished up on GameFound. So once that delivers, I don't know, they're, they're really gonna be two different games because it's a sequel. So I don't think that would be one that I would combine together. Who knows, we'll have to see how it works out. Uh, but that was a 73.18 percentile with 2,492 votes. So here in BGG, it's got an overall rank of 63, but 12 in thematic, so that's really high, right? And that's the key thing with this. This one is a very thematic, very story-driven game. Uh, we just played Stone Saga by Ulm, and that story, that, that navigation, that survival aspect, we liked it there. So we're really hoping we're gonna like the new Sleeping Gods that comes out. Uh, I think it's next year it should be delivering. Uh, Sleeping Gods Falling Skies. Uh, we didn't get both just because I don't think we have enough time to play through both those campaigns. Uh, but you guys let us know if you backed the Sleeping Gods campaign or not down below. All right. Number 16 is Obsession. We've never played Obsession, but I guess a lot of other people have. So it's uh, released in 2018. That had a 73.424 percentile uh, with about the same number of votes, about 2,352. So a little bit lower on the vote side. Um, and that again is going to impact its rating on BG. So here we are on BGG. And like I said, I knew it was gonna affect it. However, it didn't affect it as much as I thought. It's still 90 overall on BGG. So it has made the top 100, uh, number 55 in strategy, 23 in theme. Um, Audrey loves strategy games. So this is probably one that we might actually go ahead and take a look at. But again, a lot of times theme and 23 thematic, but a lot of times what the theme is, not whether or not it's thematic, can impact whether or not we're gonna like a game or not either. So that is Obsession, uh, which was number 16 
on pub meeple so we go to number 15 number 15 is another new game wonderlands war it was number 15 uh overall by the people that was with a 73.765 percentile with 1209 votes uh we did play wonderlands war we're not feeling the hype right now now we're going to give it another shot we are going to try to play it at a higher play account see if that changes so on bgg again i think it's that similar thing a little bit low uh total number of votes right now going for it uh so it is a little bit skewed but i know it is every every time every time james posts on twitter he posted going up and up so it's definitely climbing the ranks i could see again this is probably another game that could make it in the 100 uh but it's ranked 262 on bgg 150 in strategy um yeah we just we like the theme, we like the components, we like the game. I think we either played it wrong or it's just really not designed for two players. You guys let us know if you've played two players and enjoyed it. I know I saw Brothers Murph do their playthrough and they seem to enjoy it at two players. So maybe we just played it wrong. But let us know down below if you have played Wonderland's War. So number 14 is another game that we actually have. I have all of it. It's down there, you can't see it in the camera, but I have all of it, including the sequel. Um, the sequel was not in the pub meeple, so therefore I didn't combine the two as a single score. So this is just a raw score, and that is Nemesis uh, from 2008. So it does not include Lockdown. That was with a 73.791 percentile uh, with over 4,402 votes. I imagine this one's also gonna be one that's gonna be very high in thematic. All right, so here we go. We are on BGG, not Pub Meeple, like I said. Uh, and the overall rank is 18 with thematic of nine. I knew this one's gonna be high on thematic because this is that feeling of playing aliens. Um, I'm really hoping we like it. We do have the Untold Stories, which is a campaign capable. And that's, I think, what we're gonna play on the channel. Uh, if we can get to play with other players, which hopefully we have some gaming friends that want to play with us, uh, we might play the hidden trader mechanic because I think that would be kind of fun on a larger group. But in a small two player, best thing to do is just play a co-op or play it well through the untold stories. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, but there we go. Let me know. Uh, do you prefer Nemesis? Nemesis Lockdown? Which one's better? Which one should we play first? Let us know below. All right, so number 13 is, a, again, another new game. Lots of new games get lots of hype. So we'll have to see what happens to these next year. We'll have to do two videos next year, The People's Choice and then Where Are They Now? Uh, but that is Lost Ruins of Arnak from 2020, 74.091 um, percentile with 9,638 9, votes. So this one actually has quite a few votes. So it's definitely up there. Uh, in terms of people's choice. Uh, we have it as well. Again, we love deck builders. We love worker placement. This seems to have all of that. This as well as Paleo American, which again, I feel next year will probably be on here since I just delivered last year. All right, so here we go. On BGG, it's an overall rank of 29. So again, would not make the top 25, but it is top 25 strategy. Three and family. The family one's kind of confused me. I'm not how I got thrown into that category. I know people vote on whether it's a family game i don't think that's a, it's not what i would consider a family game it might be family weight uh but yeah definitely a highly rated game i think it does keep climbing as well it's one of those games that have have surprised people in the way that it has climbed through the ranks uh, a lot of times it's compared to dune imperium and then like i said paleo america is kind of getting compared as well because it's got that combination deck building and worker placement again two things that me and Audrey like so i have a good feeling we're gonna like this game as well all right so number 12 is pax premiere and this is the second edition so this one there wasn't the original pax premiere and the second edition so this is just a raw number with the second edition 74.203 percentile uh only 2904 votes so that seems about the median a lot of these are is about that 2000 mark uh so we'll see how that impacts it all right so here we go we have pax premiere here second edition uh, it is overall 40, uh, 26 in strategy. So again, two very strong. Uh, it didn't, of course, make it in the top 25, but still with only 2,000 votes here and they got 10,000 ratings uh, on BGG, it just seems like the people that are using Pub Meeple might not be the same people that use BGG for rating their games. Don't know. Uh, PAX Premier, on the other hand, if I remember correctly, was not as well received. Yeah, 1,793. So people did not like the first edition. So they must have done some significant changes and upgrades and improvements. So in my opinion, I don't think it would be fair to merge those two, even if the other one did show up in the top 500. So number 11, again, probably one that people expect to eventually show up on the list, and that is Terraforming Mars. Uh, we've only played Ares Expedition, and so far we're lukewarm on that as well. We 
we played the co-op, so maybe that's the case. Maybe if we play versus, or again, played a higher player count, might change our opinion. We do have the new expansions. So we're gonna play those on the channel. Uh, but this is the regular terraforming Mars. Again, I did not combine them. Actually, I don't think Ares Expedition even showed up in the top 500. Uh, but that is a 74.35 percentile, and that has over 11,000 votes on it. So I definitely expect this one to do pretty well. All right, here we go. And as no surprise, that is six overall, six in strategy very highly rated game but i have seen a lot of people it, it, seeing it slip in in their rankings right because a lot of people now they would prefer the quicker terraforming mars areas expedition and then of course arc nova came out and a lot of people like that theme better uh than terraforming mars so we'll have to see how long this holds at six and we'll have to see of course next year on pub meeple if the people rank it equivalently all right, so here we go. Now we're going into the top 10 people rated games. Number 10 is Twilight Imperium, fourth edition. Same thing with a lot of the other ones, the third, the second, the first, none of the other editions made it. So this is just a raw score for Twilight Imperium. I'd imagine because nobody plays the other editions anymore um, or they were just, they're very rare, right? That the, the number of people that play them isn't enough to get a high enough ranking. But that was at a 74.469 percentile. Uh, only 2,720 votes. So again, it's another one of those very niche games. So not a lot of people are playing it. Therefore, there's not going to be a lot of votes for it. But again, we're going off of people's rankings, not the number of people that voted to make said rankings. All right, so here we are on BGG. Overall ranking, five. So it does take a pretty big hit uh, in comparison. Now, the difference is BGG has over 20,000 rankings, whereas Pub Meeple only has 2,000. So that's a big difference because, again, Pub Meeple is more, I think, general people who play lots of different games and wants to actually rank all of their games comparatively. Whereas BGG, you're going to have certain genres, certain people that like certain types of games, certain style of games. Those are going to be the only games they buy, and those are going to be the only games they rank, right? might not even make a top 10 or a top 25 or a top 100 list uh, in that regard, right? So this is Twilight Imperium 5 overall, but number 10 uh, for the people. All right, moving on to number 9 is Spirit Island from 2017. This was just Spirit Island. It did not have the new version, kind of the, the Target retail edition, uh, which I watched Camilla's review. She says it's good and it's bad at the same time. So I don't even know if it'll ever make the list. So I don't know how I should calculate that. But right now, not there, doesn't get calculated. This is for regular Spirit Island. Uh, that was at a 74.56 percentile. So almost a 0.1 over um, Twilight Imperium. Uh, and it had over 8,000 votes. And over here, it is ranked 10 overall. So really close here. I mean, nine and nine on Pub Meeple, 10 on BGG, although 42,000 rankings. So again, I think it falls into that, it's niche, right? It, it is a complex game with the powers and the asymmetric power uh, abilities. It's a weight of a four. It's not new player friendly. So you're not gonna have as many people ranking it. However, the people that have this in their collection, plus a lot of these other games, they like this one about as much, right, as, as somebody who likes this more as a niche game. So that is Spirit Island. Number eight is another Stonemaier game. This time it is Scythe from 2016. Of course, there is a new action coming out, but it's different. So those two definitely aren't going to be combined. Uh, if the other one shows up on the list, they'll end up showing up separately. That was a 74.63. So again, only 0.1 difference, but has over 10,000 votes. So this definitely on BGG is going to be weighted accordingly because of those extra votes here, meaning we're probably definitely going to see close to double or eh, I wouldn't say double, um, probably maybe another 10, 20,000. All right, so here we go over on BGG. So that is a 16 overall. So again, this is where those weightings come in because this actually has 74,000 ratings compared to Spirit Island and it's rated lower but if you look over at Pub Meeple, more people voted for this game being popular and it's rated higher overall. So that's that's it's it's just neat to see these different. I don't know if everybody else likes statistics and likes seeing these, different, but it's neat to see the difference in the audiences and how these games uh, correlate. I mean, a lot are close, but we've seen other ones where it made it in the top 25 here and it wasn't even in the top 100. 
uh, on BGG. So number seven is another kind of heavy game. So I'm kind of surprised it's actually in the top 25, let alone the top 10. And that is too many bones. And in the case of the last quick starter, too many dollars. Like I wanted to get into too many bones, but I, I couldn't do that price. I think it was close to a thousand dollars to get the full chest with all of every because i'd want everything so there are some two player sets that you can get as well I, I just don't know if i want to get that because then i'd want to get everything else so chip theory if you want to go ahead and send me and either the two player version so we can try it out and then make us spend lots more money contact us email we'll we'll, we'll, we'll give you our address right uh but that was from 2017 so again this is just the base game so pub meeple you can tell it not to include the expansions so the overall game is rated this. I don't know if any of the expansions would make it better or worse, but I guess if you still like the base game, you just get rid of the expansions you don't like. Uh, but that was a 75.66, so only 0 0.03 um, over um, Scythe, and, but it only has 2,000 ratings. So again, we're, roll we're rolling into that only having 2,000 rating category again. So maybe that's something I'll do next year. Maybe I'll decide, well, if you don't have at least 5,000, maybe we won't include it in the list. You guys let me know down below if you know we should change how we're looking at the Pub Meeple rankings. All right, so we we'll go over here on BGG. So it's overall ranking 37. So not too, I wouldn't say not too bad, not too far off. I mean, compared to one that's like 238 and ended up in the top 25, not too far off. 10 for thematic. That's that's a that's a big one because I I mean I've seen the game, but you're playing poker chips and you're dungeon crawling. So I'm trying to feel how that comes across thematic. Like for me, having miniatures and having components that go through, like that feels thematic. Those chips. I don't, I don't know. You guys let me know how that, how it feels thematic, uh, but it is 27 in strategy, almost 10,000 ratings. So again, another one of those, that's kind of low in the ratings, which correlates with the pub meeple rankings. So number six, this includes two versions of the game. I don't know if I would include the other two versions once they come out, because I believe they're probably going to be less widespread. Uh, I think people would pick those up if they want the theme, not because of the game itself. If they want the game, they would probably pick up the new reprint, right? Uh, and that is Great Western Trail, which was 2016 and 2021, so the new reprint. Uh, but again, they do have Great Western Trail Argentina just came out. And I think Great Western Trail Australia, I think, is the next one. Uh, 74.69, so only, again, 0 0.03 over Too Many Bones. Uh, and again, similar, only 2,228 votes. And again, that's combined with both those games, only that many votes. So heading over here to BGG, we can see here, this is the first Great Western Trail from 2016, overall ranking of 15. Uh, so that's a pretty significant difference, especially considering I combined two games here. Normally when I was doing that, it was making them fall down because the average would be against them. Uh, strategy is 12. And then the reprint uh, from this year or from 2021 is 44 uh, with strategy 22. And this is this is an example of where, in my opinion, if the game, and it's, again, it's the way BGG does their thing. If the game changed, which this did, but the core gameplay didn't, having it on the, the rankings twice seems odd to me. To me, that it seems like a version of the game, which is what Castles and Burgundy looks like it did. It was like, well, this is just a version of Castles and Burgundy. If that's the case, why is it its own entry? It's BGG. They do what they want to do, but there you go. Even if we took this, we got, what, a four, uh, 44, 15, that'd be 60 or 59 divided by 2 would be 28, 29, something like that. So not too bad combined score, uh, but that is Great Western Trail. So we are now into the top five. So uh, let me know down below uh, before I get to the top five. Let me know down below what you think the top five games are. I'll, I'll sit here and wait for a minute while you while you type your answer. Or you can hit the pause button and then I'll have to sit here and wait. Either way, number five is Gloomhaven. So you're wondering when that was going to show up. It is only at number five. And shockingly, I'm making this video after it got taken out from the number one spot after six years. Gloomhaven has ruled the roost and has finally been dethroned there and it wasn't even in the top, uh, well, 
top one, two, three, or four <laughs> uh, for the people's choice. And I think that falls into, again, that lifestyle game scenario where people that love Gloomhaven, love Gloomhaven, love games like Gloomhaven, and they're only going to rate games similar to that. I was excited for Gloomhaven. I got the digital for free. I played the digital. Start. I kind of liked it, but I was thinking I was feeling a video game. So it kind of made me feel like those video games where you're going and you're exploring and you're leveling up. And I was like, okay, cool. But then I found the grind because I could not succeed. I couldn't figure out the puzzle with the cards and my characters were too low. And all the places I could go, I couldn't beat any of them in the number of turns. And I just, I was like, I don't want to be limited <laughs> by the number of turns, by the number of cards I have in my hand and having to burn them and refresh them to, to rest and stuff like that. I was like, I like other dungeon crawlers better. So my ranking on BGG, not very good. Actually, you'll probably see it when I pull it up. But either way, uh, lots of people like it. Uh, and of course, Frost Haven will be coming out. And that's going to be another one of those similar scenarios is like, do you combine the two? Are they really one? Because I think like Tom Vassell says, he feels like they're still just one game because it's that game system. Same as we do with Villainous, Marvel United, uh, any of those games where they make all other iterations, uh, Fantasy Realms. Uh, so we were going to go ahead and this had a 75.238. So it actually was almost one, about one point higher, a little bit less than one point, about uh, 0.6 higher. Uh, than its predecessor, and 9,098 votes. So it did have a lot of votes because uh, a lot of people play Gloomhaven. All right, and we head over here to BGG, and of course, it is number two now. It did lose its number one spot. It is number two thematic. Uh, number three strategy. The number two thematic seems weird to me because theme is two things. Theme is what the game is, and then theme is the story that it tells right so thematically yes you're doing a dungeon crawler and you're in this world and stuff like that but story-wise i've heard the story is there but it's not like really cohesively thematic and like entwined um the, the app it felt pretty good it felt like i was doing the story but again i was getting narrated too and, and all of that um also, Jaws of the Lion, if I remember correctly, was not in the top 500 on Pub Meeple, so therefore that wasn't calculated into people's choice. Um, I don't know. I think same thing. I would count that as part of this system, and I would combine all the scores together. Uh, yeah, I gave it a five. So if you guys can see my ranking there, I gave it a five. Number four is Eclipse. What is it? Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy. That's a mouthful. Uh, 2020, that had a 76.4, so that was actually a whole point, almost a point and a half higher than Gloomhaven, uh, with 7,364 7, uh, votes. Uh, so that's kind of shocking. I don't, I don't know if I've heard of that game. And once I did that, I was like, what is this? I think I've heard of it, but I haven't heard of it, if that makes any sense. Uh, but we're going to see how people over on BGG, All right? So here we go. This is the original Eclipse. The original Eclipse is 71 overall. It was not on the Pub Meeple ranking, which is, again, one of those weird ones, right? Sometimes when the second, third, or fourth edition comes out, people just immediately replace it because they love that game, but other times they don't. So this is a good example of where this has kind of stayed high in the rankings, even at a 7.9 um, overall score, yet the new edition came out. And so it's like when the new edition comes out, why does BGG still have the old edition even in the rankings anymore? Uh, but with the second edition, so here we go. This is the second edition. So the second edition is overall ranked 23, uh, 14 in strategy, much better, 8.5, uh, but it does have less ratings. I noticed on the other one, I think it was over 10K, uh, or no, 28K. So only half as many people came back for seconds. And the same thing, if we were to if we were to add these two scores together, this wouldn't even make it in the top 50 uh, BGG wise. So that, that kind of has me curious if the same thing, if Eclipse was in Pub Meeple, but it was number 550, how would that have adjusted this score? You know, would it still be the number four game for the people's choice? No telling. Uh, next year we might find out different because maybe it will show up a little bit higher in the rankings and I can combine them. All right, so we're getting into the top three so far when I told you down below to comment, did you get any of them right? No? Maybe get these three. So number three is Dune Imperium, another new one, 2020. I uh, talked to about uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak. These two are getting compared very similarly. It seems like a lot more people like Dune Imperium. I got Arnak for the theme because I've not read the Dune books. I've not 
watch the Dune movies. We need to watch the Dune movie. I do have the Portal Games Dune um, detective type game. So we are going to play that. Maybe if you like that, maybe I'll get Dune Imperium. Um, 78.2, so almost two points higher than the previous uh, and about 7,700 votes on that one. All right, here we go. We can see a Dune Imperium on BGG, overall 12. Again, this is one that just skyrocketed when it came on. People really like this game, which is really what's got me interested in getting it. But I guess at the same time, we'd have to see, like, we like that deck building. We like the worker placement. Would we like the two combined, right? Would we like to have those combined into one game? Or do we like them separately? Do we like our deck building or do we like our worker placement? So we'll play Arnak. We're going to play Paleo America because we have both of those. We'll play them on the channel. And if we like them, the way they function, having those two mechanics, maybe we'll look at Dune Imperium as well. Now, again, I've heard all three of the games play completely different in the way that they use the deck building and use the worker placement. So playing one does not necessarily mean you're going to like the other. Uh, so that's something always to be aware of. Uh, but the people say that is their number three. All right. So now we're down to the top two games. So number two is the new number one on BGG uh, to no surprise. And that is Brass Birmingham. I knew it have to come up, right? Because it is the number one on BGG. And that is with a uh, percentile of 80.61 with 6,640. Uh, Lancashire was not, I think, or I did not add them together i don't i don't remember a uh, specific i'd imagine it would have to be in the top 500 on pub meeple maybe not i didn't combine them uh so shoot me i would imagine it would have impacted this but probably ever so slightly i'd imagine lancashire was probably in the top 100 or the top 50 so if it would have done anything it probably would have only bumped this one or two spots uh down or it might have actually bumped it up right the overall score plus the number of votes might have pushed it a little bit of head. All right, here we go. I had to bring it up just so we could show you, but there we go. Brass Birmingham is number one in strategy, number one overall right now on BGG, 35,000 ratings. Uh, we haven't gotten to play this yet. It is something we'd like to get. Uh, so Roxley, uh, we played on the channel for you. Uh, but this is a highly sought after, like I said, I think it's a, it's a worker placement. You're building through the uh, Industrial Revolution type game. 8.7, very, very high score. Um, I'm not even sure what the highest score on uh, BGG is overall for a game. And then I did go ahead and put up uh, Brass Lancashire as uh, a game just to compare. So 20 overall, 15 in strategy. So just as highly rated. And that's why I was thinking in terms of the overall ranking, it was probably just outside of the 25. I, I was saying maybe it was the top like 100 or something, but I guarantee it was probably like 28, 29 and probably would have only affected Brass by one or two spots uh, overall. Uh, but that is the number two game by the people, and that is Brass Birmingham. All right, so now we are on to the number one game. Some of you might have already guessed it down in the comments. Don't know if you haven't. Go ahead and let me know if you think you know what this is. Uh, it is, of course, very buzzed about right now, and it is a game that I don't know if we would get because we don't like not to say we don't like, we've not cared for the other game that it's compared to, uh, and that is Ark Nova, which of course gets compared to Terraforming Mars. Maybe we like the theme better. We do like animals a little bit better than, uh, well, I don't mind space and I don't mind, and I like animals, but oddly we'd prefer animals over space. So theme sometimes makes a difference. Uh, that was with an 82.768 percentile uh, with 5,000 uh, 664 votes. So I only see that going up as more printings of this come out. And then we want to see the question is, can it take out, can it take out Brass Birmingham here in the future? A lot of people believe it has that kind of power. Uh, so let's see what it has to compete with. All right, so here we go. This is Arc Nova at sitting at number four right now. Uh, and it has been steadily climbing. So I, I have no fear as more copies of this gets printed, more copies of this gets out there. Right now it's at 26,000 ratings. You're going to see this climb. I, I, I would not be surprised um, if this does not end up in the, you know, top one, two, three uh, within the next six months. Uh, and if not, number one before the end of the year. But again, that's if it can take out brass. Who knows? Uh, same thing. We haven't played it. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about these types of games. I don't know if it's that engine building and getting that perfect engine, because if you don't, you accomplish nothing. Because sometimes we like those. Like we like Everdell. We like other games where we've built many engines, but Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition just seems so brutal 
But again, we played it in co-op. So if you think we could, would like Arc Nova, let us know down in the comments. Maybe we'll try to pick up a copy whenever we can find a copy. There we go. That is the top 25 games plus one, uh, according to PubMeeple, according to the people that use PubMeeple for their ranking system compared to BGG, right? How does BGG rate these games? They use a little algorithm. It does a little dance. It does a little thing, right? Uh, PubMeeple says this person rated this game. This is what the game is. This is the percentile of people that have, I guess, used our system that rated this game. And here's <laughs> its overall score. Uh, maybe if PubMeeple wants to or finds this video and leaves a comment down below, it'll tell us how they do that ranking. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know what other kinds of top 25 videos you would like to see, rankings, things like that. If you'd like to see us do this again next year, let me know. I said us, but usually these videos are by myself. Let me know down in the comments as well. But until next time, guys, peace.